Valentine's Day is coming up. You know what that means? Time to get a gift. There's no more traditional gift for Valentine's Day than underwear. If you've got a boyfriend, the sheath underwear come with a little pouch that carries his boys around and not only gives him an incredible amount of support, but also gives a nice dick print, if you know what I'm saying. The ladies appreciate it. The men appreciate it. Everybody appreciates it. And if your significant other is a female, well, guess what? They have female underwear as well, and it's super soft to the touch. You're going to have this internal struggle in your head about whether or not you want to even take it off of her. Go to sheathunderwear.com, use my promo code RRBG, and save 20%. It's a win-win for everyone. And guess what? I know what you're saying. Oh, I'm single on Valentine's Day. Well, get yourself some sheath underwear, and you'll never be single again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just real quick. Thank you, Cocliff, for sending me CBD drinks. Uh, they are awesome, and they make me feel very good, and I will drink them every day of my life. <laughs> it's pretty funny. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good, good. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with the Dirty Daddy. What's Chris up? Dickinson. What's going on? How's everybody doing out there? Just chilling. Everybody's literally got nothing. <laughs> uh, watching this movie. I, this movie just started. I, I've never even heard of it. It's like Charlie Sheen. I saw his name. It's like some car. It's so 80s. I was just watching like the first 20 minutes of Highlander 2. It looked terrible. It was so bad. I don't remember <laughs> Highlander 2 at all. I don't want to even remember what I just saw. It's it, like Sean Connery was just alive again. It's like, what? <laughs> I don't yeah, know. No, I, I, I like, I think I liked the first one, but I saw it so long the first, ago. The first one's great. Okay. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't revisited. So I really don't, I don't know, man. There's so many movies I need to go back and watch that I watched when I was a kid, you know? Yeah. It's, and I feel that way about wrestling matches lately. I just, I keep going back and watching shit that I watched when I was a kid and thinking it was incredible. And then, like, that wasn't that great. <laughs> yeah. yeah no that's true uh and there's things that i actually used to i used to think that maybe weren't that great that i go back and i watch and i think it's great right yeah there's that there's that aspect too there's that yeah. aspect too. um so i have you on here where we you, you got a match coming up this weekend yes yes i do i mean it's uh josh barnett's blood sport four you've been in like all of them or most of them Right, you've been. Oh, I think I think I've been on every blood sport. Yeah, on every blood sport. Wow. Uh, how would you rate this one amongst the previous ones that you've done? This one's so cool um, because it's going to be so different. Um, it's going to be unlike anything that you've seen from blood sport yet. Uh, anything uh, unlike anything you've seen from GCW. I imagine this is going to be uh, really special. This is going to be a, it's an event for sure. Nice, nice. I'm excited to see it, man. I, I mean, I'm a little, uh, you know, I, I had this conversation with Josh about the crowd situation. I'm like, you know, if there's any wrestling that can pull this off, it's you guys. It's Bloodsport. Yeah. Because the violence alone, it, it makes it more violent, I guess. More visceral, more raw. I mean, it's just the two dudes fighting with no audience. Well, I mean, I've been doing it for like the last year now, working for various companies, um, you know, these closed studio tapings. But to be honest, I've been doing it for like a long time. I was I was a part of uh, the original Beyond Wrestling when uh, that was it was kind of like the infancy of what this all is now of a closed studio environment with just wrestlers around the ring, a few people and kind of just going at it and then putting it on YouTube and wrestlers wrestling for wrestlers and just kind of like artistic expression, I guess, type stuff. And then eventually that snowballed and manifested into a thing. And now going back to it the last year, so much working for various companies in this type of setting, you know, I was having a conversation today with another wrestler about how we both really miss wrestling in front of a, an audience and, you know, wrestling in front of a, a really good crowd and all that. But there is a, there is something uh, really cool about the, the closed studio stuff too. I, it really makes you have to, uh, tap into something a little bit different it really makes you have to uh think outside the box a little bit more you know it really makes you have to turn it on just a little bit you really gotta you gotta be focused you gotta be prepared and you have to be like 100 percent. like you know what i mean because it's all you it's a, you know usually when there is an audience sometimes it tends to kind of uh 
the sometimes a match could take on a life of its own. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. But, I mean, but now, yeah. now it's just so much more. You're so focused, so yeah. focused. And you can't be fucking around. You can't miss because uh, you know every all eyes are on you. And even though in a live setting, the all eyes are on you as well. But there's also you know the live distractions. You know the dude selling the hot dog or whatever. And mm-hmm. you know there's things that can get in your way when you're at a live show that. When you're at home and there's just a camera pointing at you, that that that's where the focus is at. Yeah, you exactly. You have to recognize the only people that are going to see this are seeing this through the camera lens. Yeah. So it's it it does change it up. It does. That's great, man. I mean, I I've enjoyed what some of the companies are doing. Uh, obviously, it's there's something about wrestling uh, with an audience that just can't. You know, I, I still I don't want this stuff to go away either. Uh, you know, I've noticed a lot of bands are putting together these really cool live stream, um, high production. You know, a lot of creativity behind it, and I don't want that to go away. I, even if we co- go back to normal and there's live shows and everybody's going out, I still want you guys to do cool shit like that. You know? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure I won't. You know, I'm yeah. sure in some capacity it'll. It, it's because you got to think of look at the WWE situation right now, right? It's like they're still making like tons of money, right? Or so everyone they say, or, and, and their, their overhead is, is probably so much less now because they're not running live events. It's maybe they will there's people that say they'll probably never go back to running live shows again. Who knows? You know, shit, man, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's something that you hear, you hear, you know, yeah. you hear. So. I know that they were talking about, uh, they're doing WrestleMania where they did the Super Bowl, and then that they liked what the Super Bowl did. Yeah. This mix of people with cardboard cutouts. I guess. Yeah. Whatever. I think I'd feel really weird standing in the crowd and there's a cardboard cutout next to me. Uh, I thought the cardboard cutout thing was cool at the, uh, when they first started doing it in the baseball season and you were seeing like ridiculous ones. But yeah. Well, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, you know, it's also cool because the like some people here in LA, the comedians that I'm friends with, they bought one out for like a comedian that uh, that had passed away. So yeah. he was and he was a huge fan. So it was cool to like have him at the sh- at you know as like a tribute. I was like, that's a cool idea. Put, yeah. put some tributes out there, you know. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully, uh, we do get some live shows back. Cause I mean, I know you're a, you're into metal too. I mean, I see the Anthrax poster. Oh so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I wasn't even intentionally putting the camera there so you could see it. It's just just. just <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, it it shows. You know, I know that you gotta miss, you know, mosh pits and shit. You know, oh, being... Yeah, I kind of got out of going in the mosh pits a while ago. Uh, I didn't want to get hurt <laughs> accidentally <laughs> because, like, I was the last time I, I I really was going to shows was right around the time I actually got knee surgery. I remember, and uh, I was it was like twenty. I was a long time ago. It was when I was like still buying tickets to go to concerts. I haven't been to shows. Show I've been to a couple shows. The last show I actually went to, I think, was like Phil Collins. <laughs> but, uh, metal as fuck man metal as yeah. fuck yeah 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 so I, I've been I don't I definitely got out of the mosh pit life but when I was like a teenager and like in my early my late teens early 20s yeah I used to love I used to love going in the mosh pits at like death metal shows and thrash metal shows so you're not like like Josh who's out there fucking tossing kids off of stages and stuff no he like tells me <laughs> these stories he goes and he loves it he still gets into it I haven't been in that situation in such a, a long time at this point I I wouldn't even know how to react I'd be like standing back like oh god I don't want to get hurt <laughs> I feel like that's what's going to happen when we do get back to shows people are going to be all apprehensive and weird like they don't want to yeah the mosh pit's yeah. not a work man like just, yeah. you know like there's something I've gotten smashed bad in um in my in mosh pits before like just really like i don't it's it's just the perfect recipe to like blow out a knee yeah oh yeah you know? dude i yeah la- yeah yeah uh last concert it was every time i die and you know which is josh's homie also a pro wrestler andy um uh, i blew out my knee last time i saw them dude I, I fucking <laughs> yeah, man, i'm not trying to blow like you could tell me i'm a pretty laid back guy these days i don't need to get in the pit almost <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I thought, yeah, I spent. I feel like back in the day too. I spent so much more time getting crazy throughout the whole show of some of the shows I went to, or to get into the mosh pit. There was almost like you forget to even really know what's going on. But yeah, there you is, start missing the show. Yeah, there's there's nothing like it though. So I, I saw some great shows. The 
in in the city uh, the you know the when i was still going to death metal shows like my favorite band to see live the last like band i really liked seeing live was hate eternal they were like one of my that was a band you could kind of like just sit back and watch and be like oh my god i can't believe they could play all this stuff live. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds this good you know yeah 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 i i mean i've dude it's funny i've been in a number of fights i you know used to do jujitsu a lot i've i've been through some shit and uh i've only ever lost a tooth in a mosh pit Oh yeah, that's how fucking intense. Smashed. I had my nose smashed once so bad, and I think honestly, I broke my nose like three, th- four, four times. I'd count that as one of them. I like you know the middle of your nose, the septum or whatever. Yeah, it's like part of it. And my nose is like smashed to one side way further because of a, of a shot I took from someone in a mosh pit. Have you ever fixed? Have you looked into fixing that? That no, I've had to have my nose broken back into place though. Like the <laughs> like this bone over here would be on like this side or this side. I have like really they bad just move it too. around, snap yeah. it back into I, place. I I, I got it. I, I used to just make the guys do it. That I one guy I trained with, he was like in a like a physician's assistant. He just did it on the spot. It's like really hard. Two clicks over. It's not that bad. So, I mean, does that affect your breathing, like for cardio training well, and stuff like that? I don't think it affects like my cardio training, but since I broke my nose so many times when I was like younger, I, it definitely, I get congested a lot easier. Mm. Um, sometimes I have to clear my nose. I have to like pick it. It's like, hard. I can't blow it all out. It's hard because it does. It sucks ass. That sucks, man. Well, I mean, I had a, a buddy of mine used to do uh, jujitsu with him actually. And uh, he, he was in, he actually sings in the band uh, Poison the Well. I don't know if you've heard them hardcore oh, yeah. band out I've of Florida. i heard of that band before. Absolutely. Yeah, well, Jeff recently, you know, he, he's had his years of just moshing and, you know, shows and jujitsu and everything. His nose was all kind of like crushed and he recently <laughs> got it fixed. And he's like, dude, I can, I can work out again. I'm like, I'm a new person. Like I breathe better. I have more oxygen. And I'm like, I, I'm thinking clearer. I'm like, that's fucking, that's nuts. Yeah. You don't think about that, you know? Yeah. Speaking of uh, b- b- blood sport, Josh Brown's blood sport, if uh, somebody, he's taken some beatings. He's gotten messed up in the past in some of those fights. Uh, and he looks fine. He doesn't look like he, like a oh, crazy... Yeah. Not banged up fighter, you know. He's a the baby face assassin. He's got he's good got jeans, that, those Viking jeans, you know. Beard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. some guys are ex boxers or MMA fighters. You could just tell you look at him, you're like, oh shit, like, they're barely God. they're barely there, man. <laughs> yeah, no, the face, the face yeah. just looks crazy. Yeah, yeah, you got all the scar tissue. The eyebrows get all fucked up. I mean, look at Wanderlei Silva had to get the the eyebrow surgery to like shave down all the scar tissue. It's because the ears, kind of, the ears oh. get crazy looking, man. It's rough. Yeah. It's a rough look, man. So have you ever considered, now that we're talking about fighters and, and everything, have no, you ever considered doing no, MMA now? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's too much to, uh, don't want to break the, you know, the moneymaker? It's not that as much as it's like, it's just, man, it's just think about like how much it, it, it would take so much focus and so much training and so much like, like I'd have to. I'd have to go like live on the West Coast and train with Barnett like nonstop. I'd have to that would be like my my goal, my what I'd want to do. Or I'd have to just be one hundred percent focused on just doing that. I would I wouldn't be able to probably pro wrestle at the same time. Mm. I think it would take like all everything I got to put into focus, and then and then it's like you know after that, then what? Then do you keep going? You know, uh, yeah. I think I I just reached the point where it's like the. Uh, I, I pro wrestling is what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, I, that's what I love. I love pro wrestling. I love MMA. I like watching it. I, I like following all the different, you know, versions of MMA. Maybe I would do something different. Maybe not MMA, maybe a jujitsu tournament place yeah. or something like different. I don't know. It's just, but like the old rules when they used to do like the rope race and stuff, yeah. I, I ain't looking to go like banging in a cage, man. Like I'm all set. Like those guys are some of those guys are serious. I've trained with a lot of high level MMA fighters who all uh, made it to the UFC, had a couple fights in the UFC or the UFC a heavyweight champion like Josh, or all yeah. across the spectrum. I've I've done jujitsu with these guys or train catch wrestling or you know actual training, and I felt you could feel like how it feels to to have to compete with someone like that, and it's no joke. So you realize like it would take a long time and a lot of training and a lot of like, you know, re- repetitive work to get to that point. It's not just something you could just say, ah, you know, I think I'm going to try it. Maybe some people can, but I, I don't think I'm that type of guy. Well, I think the whole world kind of saw someone try it and not really 
able to do it because I guess he learned. He got you like you said. It's hard, man. You can't just well, fucking punk, go. Are you talking man. about punk. Yeah, I like the guy, but come on, like you saw what happened. That wasn't enough training, dude. I don't care how. Like two years, great. You need it five, six, six I, years. I, no, I guess if like if you want to talk about punk, it's like interesting because a lot of those guys like really respect the fact that like he he hustled that and he yeah. made it happen and he and he and he and he, and he tried. But like, yeah, what was he? You know, I guess if you were in that position to get all that and make that much of a payday out of doing it, like, oh, I do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and he, and at least he like seemed like he really tried, I guess, you know, and he, but he, yeah, he went and trained. I saw training videos. He, he went and did MMA training. That's, but you know, you need more. You need a lot of like amateur fights under your belt, too. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think it was, uh, I'm kind of in the, what, you know, I'm sure it, I don't give it what whatever. If, I'm in the in the party of the he should have absolutely probably had a few amateur fights before fighting in the UFC. Yeah. I think just for like the respect of the sport, uh respect of the other fighters, you know. And same goes but, for pro wrestling too, man. Like you don't want to get some green dude that's been to like, you know, a, a year of classes and throw him in there with like a, you know, a fucking daniel bryan or something happens all the time and now yeah. they're just they're, they're all just getting jobs now yeah, yeah. <laughs> now all those people are just getting contracts <laughs> That's it. so what's i mean you you uh you've done work with the uh, wwe with the evolve in the past and uh is that something that you're you look into like for potential in the future or are you good with what you got going on right now with new japan and being kind of like you know being able to do blood sport being able to show up you know i want to wrestle for new japan honestly that's that's where i want to make my main destination as far as uh pro wrestling is concerned i don't really have interest in in the wwe to be yeah. honest i'm just gonna be honest i know yeah. people would be like oh my god no and it's I, dude it's getting bad i mean you know, I've, i'm a fan and and i watched you know i watch everything because i'm a fan of the sport so uh, i watch i watch ring of honor i watch new japan i watch wwe i watch all of that shit but you know i watched raw uh on monday and i was just like damn dude this is rough. Like, why are we talking about Cardi B? Why is Cardi B coming to the WWE? I don't need that in my life. <laughs> well, depending on how you look at it, you know, um, everybody has their own idea of what pro wrestling is or what pro wrestling should be. Um, I know what I want out of it, and I know what I enjoy with pro wrestling. I know what um, where Chris Dickinson fits in, you know, and how and how and what where I belong. Yeah. And uh, I I just enjoy being able to not have to you know go down that road or feel like i should go down that road or i want to just prove that you could you could live and you could make it not having to go that direction you know in pro wrestling it's possible for sure man for sure and it's it's weird too because you know not to go back to them but you know they had like i said they had those segments or they're bringing in pop stars and whatnot but then at the same time that same night you got two of the best indie wrestlers were wrestling each other on prime you know mid mid slot it was uh riddle and fucking keith lee yeah and, like these are two dudes i've seen at pwg these are they've you know i've seen them make the rounds and yeah you know everybody loves those guys and here they are on that show but also we have to put up with bad bunny <laughs> oh i know i mean you know wwe and wwf i mean they've always done the same thing realistically if you really look at it if you look at the history of it all it's like they've, they've always been the it's always been the same deal you know mm -hmm. they uh the, the the pop stars and the the outside uh yeah that's true i mean even from right. first wrestlemania you've had it just always shit. it always it just goes with the times you know what i mean it's it evolves with the with the times and whatever's going on in pop culture at that given time that's just the way it is it's always yeah. been the way I think it's just me getting, you know, tired of it and wanting to wanting more shit like New Japan, oh, wanting I, more shit like Bloodsport, you know. Oh, I listen. My, I'm. I'll tell you the truth. I stopped watching the WWE when I was in high school because I didn't like the way that they were pushing everybody so fast. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I, and then at the same time, I started watching the Indies, and like that's around the time Ring of Honor just started, like 2002, and then I started buying like the Japanese VHS tapes and. Yeah, I just wasn't interested in uh in like television wrestling anymore. And then I never became a weekly week to week viewer ever again. I would like chime in here and there. And then I played in bands going back to music. Yeah. So yeah. I, I wasn't so much interested in wrestling for a few years and I never watched it. I would watch it if like Ric Flair had a big match or like when Hulk Hogan was uh, having his run again, things like that. I was go watch it with friends, but I uh 
I never really watched it like week to week anymore for like forever, to be honest. It's been a long time. You you played drums, right? You you mentioned the band thing. Yeah. Played yeah. Drums. What, what what bands were you in? That uh, is there, you know, can just Spotify? a couple of smaller bands. I was I, I was in a um I was in a band with the lead singer from this band, Exumer, at one point. Uh yeah. they, they were we were pretty good actually. We were like okay. I wasn't that into it, but it was fun. Um they was called Sun Descends. He they were signed to like a a label that had like distribution or something. I uh was in a, a thrash band here uh, where I grew up with these kids. We were called Sanitarius. So you can actually look it up on Spotify. I want our EP is on there. That was like, you know, kind of like shreddy uh neoclassical thrash metal type stuff. Okay. Like, uh, it's just Metallica. I just saw a lot of double bass and just real like like teenage thrash metal. Um okay. I was thought a- about doing it again? Like going back, starting a band. No, uh, I I've, I did over the over the years of when I was wrestling. I had a band called a Crowbar Facelift. That was like a death metal band, but we played like covers. We played Morbid Angel covers, DSI covers. Um, right. Had a couple of originals. Had some fun live shows, but nothing really too extravagant. We never recorded anything. Then I was in a band with the basically the same band except for one person. This band called Native Steve. More kids like I grew up with. More a little bit different than Crowbar Facelift, but still kind of like death metal thrash metal grindcore you know a little mix of everything hardcore that was a fun band we played some shows i have some footage of that online um we recorded an ep uh ourselves uh yeah, i think like it's on you could listen to the songs on one of those websites like Bandcamp or something but we never <laughs> okay. like you know we have we had we made some t-shirts we made some stickers man we were not really we were just like friends that got together and played Right, right. Well, yeah, I mean, that's usually how it goes with metalheads. Like, you know, it starts that way, and then eventually one of the bands gets picked up and, you know, does it, does it for the rest of their lives. But, yeah, yeah, it's usually, you know, if you, that's the career you're choosing, you know. But what, yeah. what would you say is your favorite uh, drummer uh, in terms of inspiration? Like, who's, uh, who's like, the mm. guy for you? I was so blown away, like, and I still am. I love it so much. I'll never not say I don't love it. I was my favorite like mm, abigail king diamond mickey d do you know mickey d the drummer mm-hmm. from king diamond and motorhead he was in motorhead for years that yeah. guy he was like incredibly influential to me as a drummer um but i love obviously a lot of like the uh the thrash metal guys and the death metal guys i like a lot of the older guys too i mean you just name them i could probably tell you if i really was a big fan like i love alex van halen Nice. Love like Tommy Aldridge. Um, I love uh, God uh, St- Steve Gadd. Um, if you want to go in that direction, uh, guys that I could just name off the top of my head that I really like. I do. I I love. I'm not like the biggest fan of Dream Theater, but like the first two Dream Theater albums, I love. Like Mike Portnoy. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, Dave Lombardo is probably the reason why I even wanted to play drums. Fuck yeah, Dave honest. Lombardo, yeah. man. I mean, that's like the big one, right? Uh, Gene Hoagland, oh, Sean right. Reiner. Um, Sean Reiner. Forget man. about uh, Pete Sandoval. That was like mind blowing. I was so into Derek Roddy. Derek Roddy, uh, his exercise and um, like methods of practice. It and m- me uh, learning, uh, trying to uh, follow his methods of practice, helped me become like a way better drummer. So Derek Roddy definitely was a huge influence. Oh uh, yeah. I like a lot of drummers. Oh Vinnie Paul. I mean Vinnie Paul is this dude. He's so. a legend, man. You know. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. like, I mean, he, that's, I was just listening. I, that's that his, his stuff never gets old to me. Yeah. Somebody asked me what my favorite Pantera song was before. And it's like, I can't even put it on Spotify. I, Cause my favorite Pantera song is uh, off. I am the night, you know, the song daughters of the queen. Daughters of the queen. It's I don't one think of like heard their 80s songs when Terry <laughs> Blaze was still in the band. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I love Pantera, man. That's one of my all time favorite bands. Dude, I love it. I, I I went to go. Uh, I forget what town it is. Uh, but when we when I was in the band on tour, we stopped by uh, Dimes Tombstone. I think it's Arlington, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we stopped in there, and you know, at first, uh, my buddies in the band were like, "Hey, man, we're gonna go. We're gonna go see Dimes uh, Tombstone." I'm like, "Oh, okay." I didn't really think much of it. I, I'm a, I was a big fan of Pantera, but I wasn't. I was like, "All right, cool." And I wasn't expecting to feel anything. I was like, it's a, you, you know, it's you, just a... it, it did something for you. Oh my God, dude. The second we got out of the van, uh, some of the dudes immediately like started crying and like 
touching the tombstone and all this shit. And as I'm walking up, I just got overwhelmed. I'm like, oh, shit. This is where we're at. <laughs> I got it. All right. Yeah. You know, when I when I think about the bands of my whole life that, like, I like the most or a lot of the bands that I listen to a lot, um, and I think of, like, the bands that were the best, right? the bands that really were flawless like they didn't have any any flubs in the discography mm-hmm. pantera from literally from metal magic their first album all the way through to reinventing the steel they did not make a bad record they made not a, every album was another step above the other one they all still sounded so badass you know even when they were still playing kind of like that 80s style yeah. And they just got better and better. And the one constant always on every record from the when they were the first, the just started to the end is Dimebag Daryl is always ripping it absolutely insane. So them, like I always put bands like them. Death is another band that like death does not have a bad record. You could say ones are better than the others, but they don't have a bad album. You know, I used yeah. to really feel that way about morbid angel then they made that really bad album with like the song radical on it remember that yeah, one yeah yeah no, and they made yeah. this album again with david vincent but if you and, and the, the, but the last morbid angel album did you listen to that one yeah that one is insane dude yeah, it's the, really the new one with good. steve tucker so i like steve tucker morbid angel more than i like david vincent morbid angel from back in the day like gateway annihilation uh formulas fit out to the flesh but regardless the original David Vincent albums and then like the, the you know the Steve Tucker albums that they, they like Morbid Angel was one of those bands I call them like a flawless band they didn't have a bad album nice. you know so okay. uh, violence violence had that like kind of not so good third album Dark Angel Dark Angel never had a bad album either that's one of my all time favorite bands I think I've heard the, Dark Angel that's Gene Hoagland's band before he was in death mm, okay. uh, you know okay. you know uh you uh Come on, man! Like you never heard the song "Merciless Death" or like "Burning of Sodom." I may have. I just did. I just that's right. I'm yeah. trying. I'm There's, blanking there, out. That's right that's just like pure bludgeoning thrash metal. <laughs> like the, like the, Gene Hoagland. Think of how good Gene Hoagland is. Yeah. In the '80s, before like drum triggers and all that <laughs> stuff, and it's just ripping it absolutely apart. Like it's, it, they were they were amazing. It's uh, it's it's such an endurance. Um... I guess test when you're a drummer in a band like that, dude. You you got to yeah. get in the craziest shape of your life. Is your constant double pedaling, yeah. And you know now, like you said, triggers can make it a little easier for some of them. But I don't. Well, I, no, I, the, I the, can the, tell. Still, you know? man, the triggers in, in like the, you, you know those guys like someone like Gene Hoagland doesn't need drum triggers or no. like any of those guys really. They don't. The, and the, the guys that you need the drum triggers are the guys. Like uh, some of those death metal guys that played 30 second notes for like super, super duper long periods of time, like where it's like like bands like Hate Eternal or Nile. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nile. But, yeah. Uh, guys like that are that like Gene Hoagland. No way, man. He's just, he, he, he used drum triggers. He's just, you watch, you can watch him play. It, it's just a matter of, uh, even not so much in, obviously endurance is a big part of it it's it's a matter of like finding that zen comfort where you're completely comfortable mm-hmm. and you're not exerting any energy but where like you need it to be that's right. playing double bass to me is uh because me i get like really into playing and i like to rock out and you you can't when you play faster tempos or yeah. you want to play faster tempos for long periods of time you have to be completely chill you have to focus on what's going on and you have to keep time. You have, you you just have to keep time and you gotta, you can't, you, you can't lose, you can't like play too fast. You gotta just stay mm-hmm. cool and just keep breathing. It's, it's like anything else. You know, if you get tightened up, you're, you're, you're not going to make it. Right. Yeah. That goes for every, like you combat sports and, and wrestling mm-hmm. and everything. If you get all tensed up, man, it's no good. Yeah. Uh, and I love, I've always enjoyed the, the, I guess the like you were saying the vibe that you get when when you're in a band and everything just kind of clicks everybody's communicating kind of telepathically oh yeah you know, those moments everybody just looks at each other and it's like oh how, how do you know I, I try to explain that to certain people that don't listen to music or don't listen to metal or you know have never been in a band and I don't know how to tell them that without sounding weird. Like, yeah, it's a superpower. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I I used to love writing originals. I used to love writing originals. I used to love playing covers. I used to love doing everything. But it was times, like, I was blessed. Um, I have a friend I played in a, in a band with, a death metal band, and we were pretty awesome. That band, Crowbar Facelift. This kid's an amazing guitar player. I mean, he is, like, 
an unbelievably uh, gifted guitarist and he, you know he's a he has like a phd in music now he's nice teaches tons of students he, he's a he's he's like a genius too he's like one of those freaks that could do the rubik's cube really really fast he's like Shit. a total total like nut and uh he is an amazing musician and he helped me up my game he made me better in my instrument just by playing with him and him opening me up to things with music because my grandpa was a jazz musician Mm. my grandpa taught like saxophone clarinet he he gave drum lessons he you know a little bit of all that i didn't really take to that stuff um i learned to play drums listening to like metallica and kiss and you know and slayer (laughs) it's like how i did band those type that type of music so uh playing with this kid and getting a real taste of like all that other stuff and seeing how it's applied to the music I like to play and learning about different time signatures, um, hearing it and other music that I enjoy and tr- starting to apply it to my own playing. It was like definitely a big, a big help to be able to, to, to play with someone like that, that could make you so much better. Those were the moments I remember. I felt like really like I was getting somewhere with, with drums. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's something about that, like working with people that are more talented or, as talented as you so that you guys can make each other better and you know yeah. grow yeah. Right together it's it's insane there's nothing like it and you know uh keep going back to like i, I always compare pro wrestling to music all the time just because it's uh, to me it's such a parallel world the touring the road the you know the yeah. selling shirts yeah. out of your briefcase and shit like that's you know yeah. that's metal that's what we do in bands you tour and sleep outside and fucking and at the beach you know whatever to, to get you to the next gig yeah finding sounds was always like a big thing i love to do and i got into like flipping i got into like collecting and flipping uh like vintage drum sets when i was in my 20s and a lot of cymbals and i started working in like music retail and i started uh like hooking up with like um like pearl companies like that and having like snare drums built and really getting into uh creating sounds and just figuring out what sounds i really wanted like you know because when you're young and you don't have any money at all like no money you just kind of have to settle for using like any cheap symbols you could find or not really understanding like how to build a sound palette out of symbols um how to tune drums and how, what what heads to use on your drums and exactly which ones you want to make it th- this certain uh you know wood sound this way and learning how to figure out tones and then getting into recording i got lucky i uh one of those bands I was in that thrash one, I when I was about eighteen, um, Billy Grazia Day from Biohazard produced our EP, and then he produced an album we did, and he nice. was like managing us, and he had like a, a crazy studio I'd never been in before in my life, where like real bands went and recorded. There. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. how the I saw the process worked really for the first time, and I and I and it humbled the shit out of me because I never played to like click tracks before, and I sucked. And I, I was like, I need to get so much better. And it was like a learning, a learning process and also learning how to like find tones and, you know, building those ideas in my mind of like, what, what the, what did this, this symbol sound like as opposed to these symbols, how, what is learning about like how it's all made, just being a psycho over stuff, man, a nerd, just being a big nerd. How, so when did the, like, what made you made the switch from music to, to become a wrestler? Like what was, why didn't you just always, continue down the music path? I always wanted to be a wrestler. Honestly, that yeah. was always like my number one life goal ever since I was a little kid, but I was so into heavy metal and, and I got so into music. I tried learning how to play a few different instruments. Like I said, music is in my family. So like I picked up a saxophone. I tried to play in like the school band. I hated it. Um, I, my grandpa would give me like saxophone lessons. I wasn't about it. Um, I tried to play guitar. I didn't, it just, it wasn't, I, I took guitar lessons. I didn't really like it. And then I was like, fuck it like i really think like i could play the drums it it it, it looks like something like i could do and then i uh i would i would i would got like a pad and um just a buddy rich like rudiment book mm-hmm. and i would just read the book and i would just teach myself how to play like the basic rudiments and the like single strokes and double strokes and i would just practice them to a metronome or practice them along to like iron maiden and judas priest and metallica or like songs where the tempo wasn't too fast and i would just build up my chops in my hands that way and after like doing that for a few months my grandpa 
uh, got me my first drum set. And, uh, and that was it. I started teaching myself how to play the drums. And then I started taking lessons with a couple of different people uh, locally. Like I uh, started taking lessons with like this jazz guy. I do. I learned a lot from the, the, the original drummer of the band White Lion. His name's <laughs> Nicky Capozzi. He was this crazy like crackpot guy who uh, lived in like what I guess was his parents' house, but like he was like an older man now. And like his whole like house was literally just, just giant like crazy 80 size drum sets everywhere all set up individually with like the full deal of cymbals like i'm talking every drum set was like two bass drums like four rack toms 10 cymbals it was like and you could just walk from like drum set to drum set and play on each one of the these drum sets and he would give me drum lessons and i would he taught me a lot about uh about getting like making my double bass faster phrasing uh fills all sorts of stuff like he he was a he was a really good influence and uh <clears throat> i just kept practicing me and my friends have a studio um basically i could still go to the studio right now um nice. we've had this, this studio room for pretty much so it's been probably like 15 years we've been we've all had a hand in this room and we uh we all like pay a little bit of money and there's a group of us and it's basically like if we ever want to go there and practice, you can. And there's all sorts of equipment that you could use, like amplifiers, awesome. a drum set. Yeah. That's awesome. So, yeah, it's like a shared kind of communal studio room that me and my close group of friends that I've played with for over, over all the years have always kept in the in the family, you know. Gotcha. gotcha. You know? But I mean, OK, so so what, what was it that got you to switch to wrestling? Like, what was the what what? What was the official like? Was it a school thing? Was it just a local I, show? Was it like I could, listen, I could do me with wrestling. I, I don't have to worry about four other people. You true, know what I mean? True. I don't true, have to true. worry about three or four other people. Um, I and uh, my friends were assholes. You know, we sometimes just we started not getting along with certain things or understanding like the we didn't with, with especially with the later bands i was in we were so like elite and so like above anything that we just wanted to play for ourselves play a few shows locally and like sell out a few small bars where like a hundred people could come and just fucking go absolutely batshit crazy and that's it just do that and have a good time i uh wrestling was just i just i have my friend sean uh, sean maluda he's an aw okay uh we went to karate together when we were little kids he eventually became a pro wrestler, right? My friend Tyson, who was my tag partner, Jaka, we were Evolve Tag Team Champions. And yeah. He was the guy I was doing the WWE stuff with, kind of. He went to the same karate school. We all grew up together. We were little kids. And uh, around the time I was like 18 years old, I wasn't into wrestling really at all or thinking about pursuing wrestling. I was playing music, seriously. And my friend Sean was gung-ho the whole time about wanting to be a wrestler because he's his, his mom's sister married off of the wild Samoan. So he's like oh, kind of married into the Samoan family. And he was a little younger than me. So at this point, he was like, listen, I'm trying to get into wrestling. I like, seriously, Tyson's going to get in it too now. We all used to backyard together. So he's like, Tyson's getting into two. And I'm like, Tyson, really? I haven't talked. I didn't talk to him. Tyson was like my best friend, my who became my tag partner. We haven't been talking. We had a little bit of a fucking falling out over some shit, a riot that happened at a concert where I got into some trouble. <laughs> it was, oh, I'm shit. serious. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and yeah, with long story short, we weren't talking or something. So so then eventually i was like what that motherfucker's getting into wrestling and he's like he's gonna like take it seriously like now because he was always kind of like half in half out but he was mad good at karate so we uh we all started getting into it together like and we're like decided we're gonna like give give pro wrestling a real go and at that point i had already trained a little bit because i started training when i was like in high school when i was like 15 16 you know and at this point i was like all right now i'm gonna really give it a real go i started training with little guido James no Guido. Yeah. Uh, I started just bouncing around, um, tr training wherever I could, going to like open rings. I went to like Harley Race's uh, wrestling school for uh, pro wrestling Noah training seminars and things like that. Uh, I, then we started Beyond Wrestling around that time. It was all like between 2007 and 2009. And uh, I just wanted to be a wrestler, man. I love wrestling. I love wrestling so much. I saw Ring of Honor stuff that I hadn't seen 
um because i just wasn't really paying attention like i saw matches kenta was having i got like super into pro wrestling noah and i was just like because i loved all this stuff like in the early 2000s mid to that and then i got like three years you know when you're like 19 23 years is a long time now it's like nothing right yeah but yeah. I, I didn't watch it for a few years and then when i started like seeing what was going on i was like fuck like this yeah. is the, like wrestling is turned into a total fucking like Ken, kenta was a big uh, kenta you know kenta right yeah, yeah he's Dude, out my, there in new japan right now yeah, when I started, oh. when Kent, when I was watching Kenta in like Ring of Honor and Pro Wrestling Noah and all that, I was like, I can't believe people wrestle like this. This is like, this is insane. Like, what is good? This is really taking steps to evolving into something else completely crazy. Yeah. So I was so influenced by it. And, uh, you know, it was, I had a more of a, I got into working out, which none of my other friends that played music were really into, you know what I mean? I stopped drinking beers, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. so I started uh, kind of becoming like a, like a healthy uh, fit guy, you know, getting more into that than, than so much getting a beat playing music, you know? And playing music, partying, and treating your body like shit. <laughs> yeah. Doing drugs. I mean, like, dude, I can't even, yeah. even up until like, now like um, me and my friends are all in like our early 30s <clears throat> i'll show up to uh i showed up i remember last year around this time like right before i went to japan or right after i went to japan or whatever i went to like a card game at my studio like all my friends are playing poker for money and like i don't even want to tell you what these guys are doing and i'm just <laughs> like what i'm like i can't even believe you guys are, are doing this still it's just like i thought shit was good you guys were gonna because i didn't live up here for like a couple years <laughs> I was like, I can't believe you guys are still getting down like this, man. This is you get it's crazier than ever. Yeah, it's supposed to be slowing down. Like nobody's just sitting around playing NBA Jam anymore. Everybody's doing. <laughs> everybody's getting a little too crazy for me. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. yeah, I can imagine, dude. I can imagine. I mean, I, I, I've, I am not in that world anymore of of uh partying up till two three in the morning but I, that was my life for many years with the band and yeah even going like after going to nam uh have you ever been to nam oh no i wish it's, i've heard so many good stories about oh, that God. nam is like a whole day of guitar center but uh the night time hangouts that's where it's at there's every all all the bands playing like smaller venues and then they're all hanging out in hotel rooms and the yeah. parties go for you know, all oh, the yeah. whole weekend. It doesn't stop. It does what not do you play? stop. Uh I used to sing in a band. I play keyboards. I play bass in another band where I it's like a violence, power violence type of band. Grindy, sludgy. Uh I'm starting a new project soon. I'm not gonna make any announcements until we actually get together and write a song, but I'm I'm still trying, you know, because it, it that was my life for ten, eleven years. Touring and making music and now it's been three Three years more or less since we we kind of took a hiatus and i haven't done shit that's cool so I'm like i need to start something now because i i get the <sighs> itch too man i get the itch the beginning of the pandemic i was playing a lot just by myself like just playing a lot because i, I had needed some sort of outlet when yeah. everything was just completely shutting down and there was no end in sight i would just go to that studio room and i would sit there for like hours and just like to look at the walls and be like oh my god what's gonna happen in my life am i ever gonna <laughs> wrestle again yeah. i was like let me play along to black magic for the 10 millionth time in my life you know or I, I play along to music that you wouldn't even imagine i would play along to and i'll just sit there it could be like an 80s j-pop song and i'll just nice. i'll just play double bass the whole time because it's yeah, like it, it's it, fun tempo, to add it the tempo just pleases me yeah. so it's like you know i could sit there dude and i could play exercise but what am i gonna fucking play exercise I, just put on the song and i'll just rip 16th notes throughout this whole, entire verse right. you know and that'll make <laughs> me feel that'll make me feel like i have somewhat chops then i'll text message with my friend chicky who i've been playing in bands with for years and we'll be like let's get together and play some uh celtic frost this week let's do it yeah we're gonna get to we're gonna, I'm gonna do it and then we'll never get together this, you know <laughs> what i mean that's like that's the extent of my yeah. rock and roll living. It's like, yo, we got to fucking play this forbidden song. You know that one? Or, uh, yo, you want to jam on some God, Iced Earth? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> dude, look, dude, that whole thing when he came out that he was at the thing. Yeah, we, oh my we, God. Me, and my, me and my friend got together. We we had a little fun and we like celebrated by listening to all of Night of the Storm Rider. Oh, and we were like, that's God. it from him. He's done. He's we were done, yeah. He was gone, man. We were witnessing the end of his career. Wiped up. <laughs> end of his existence they white probably wiped him off the face of the earth yeah, 
dude. That dude, man. It's so funny because I saw, uh, you know, when the whole shit was happening, and my friends are, I had a bunch of friends met, like sending me articles and pictures. And so, I grabbed dude, it before it was, so it was announced, funny. before it was announced on like Metal Injection. I just, my friend sent me a picture and I'm like, that's John Schaefer. He's like, who? Dude, I'm like, like Oh my God, that's John Schaefer. <laughs> like, dude, like, <laughs> like in the camera, like, oh my God, like, that's the dude from Ice to Earth. And my friends are like, really? I'm like, yep. And then like 20 minutes later, you see the article on metal injection. I'm like, oh shit, there it is. Yep. I was right. Uh, dude, I mean, like, what do you expect, <laughs> man? Like you really, is it yeah. really surprising? Do you remember yeah. when they wrote that album, like all about American history and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. No, so, I wasn't, I wasn't shocked. I was just kind of like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> It was just I like, know. all right, well, that's over now. You can't. I know. Hey, man, you know what? But that's the thing. With a lot of those bands, um, my fandom, like I was saying before, the great bands, right? Uh, the, the flawless bands we, yeah. you, the, where every album's great. A lot of the bands aren't for all flawless bands. Pantera's so tend, one of them. I, Pantera's get on Pantera's issues. One of them. Yeah. So I tend to take bands and I put them into like eras in my mind and I only know them as that era and I only care about them as that era. I don't even care about any of the bad stuff they've made. Like a band like a Death Angel, right? right? I just really like the first Death Angel album. I think it's one of the greatest albums ever made. Everything else they made whatever I, it, I don't care death angel though the first album unbelievable or like you know the uh the first four king diamond records i think they're all pretty awesome if you really want to be stingy about it we could go like the first two or three like really <laughs> yeah. super elitist about it yeah, uh, yeah. a lot of bands obviously the, the king of this uh this way of thought is metallica the first three metallica albums that's it oh, for yeah. me no, I'm not going. I don't like going past that point. You know, so. First three is Kill 'Em All, Lightning, the Lightning and Injustice. Master Puppets. Master Puppets. You don't like Injustice? Yeah. I used to like it when I was young, and then as I got older, I just started to hate it. Honestly, I, <laughs> I still, I still like it. I mean, I, uh, I got, I still have that conversation in my brain of like, is that blackened? Uh, time signature thing that happens midway through the song. I love it, but I'm always like, is that Lars or is that James? Like, who did that? Because I don't think Lars could do that. I don't know. He only did it once, I guess. I think Anthrax was like unbelievable. Their first few albums, that their first three albums are just absolutely batshit, crazy, insane. I can't believe that dude's still going. And speak Scotty. english or die is like a top five of all time for me personally yeah. that's like some classic stuff some of the stuff after among the living it's like eh, i could take it or leave it you know i think this, that they they made some great music but um i i hold the the first like three like pretty high Fuck yeah same man. thing same thing with a lot of those bands uh lately though, i've been coming back i used to i hated slayer for like the longest time like, i got fell out of like liking slayer <laughs> i was just like oh whatever but lately they've been like slipping back into my life and uh dude hell awaits how insane is that album that album yeah. is incredible that's a great album classic, great album. classic. have you heard album. lombardo uh with mike Patton, the dead cross oh 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 yeah yeah, yeah. and F- oh, it used to be fantomas and all that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I used to be a huge Faith No More fan. I used to love Faith No More too. Yeah. So I I like the Dave Lombardo, um, Mike Patton stuff. The combo. Yeah, it's a good combo. Yeah. Um, do you listen to metal all the time? Like, is that your workout music, or is there something that you switch out to? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I, I I listen to so much, so much different stuff. I, but metal is always a a constant theme in my in in the in the in the listening and the playlist. Um, like okay, my top twenty songs of of twenty twenty, um, Night Rider, Midnight Star. This is like a J pop song. This is like an eighty city pop song. Um, you know, I can't. I don't. I'm not even gonna pronounce it because it's just you know. What I mean? <laughs> uh, the the uh, the this uh, the other side of madness, the Crow Mags, um, nice. yep. mo- modern romance. This this J this like new oh, uh, retro wave J pop group called Satellite Young. Uh, I love Marty Friedman. You know Marty Friedman, yeah, the guitar yeah, player. I love his solo stuff. Um, shit, man. Uh, Overkill's on this list. Uh, Overkill, Ingvae Malmsteen's on this list. Nice. Magic. I love that out al- that album trilogy with like Magic Mirror and Fire. But I got like R and B songs on here. I've got uh, Michael Jackson. I got Drew Down. That's like a old school West Coast rapper. 
Japanese shred guitar players. There's a Slaughter song on here. Um, <laughs> there's a DMX song, Method Man, Nas, a Japanese metal band called Sekima 2, um, more Chromags, Anthrax, of course, Metallica, still always. I still listen to some of that. The Alice in Chains, Pantera, just the classics, man. You know, I always think about this stuff. I'm like, why do I still listen to this stuff? Why do people still talk about this stuff? Because it's just that good. Sepultura, um, this, do you remember this Christian metal band called, they were a thrash band called Deliverance? They're on this list. The new um, Sepultura was tight. I don't know if you heard that. The newest Sepultura? Oh, yeah. oh that's one of my all time favorite bands. Yeah, dude. The newest album is really good. Really? really? Like, really who's, who's even in it anymore? Apollo Jr.? Uh, they have a new drummer called Andrews Igor's. Kisser. Uh, not oh, Igor's, their new drummer sorry. is insane. Yeah, yeah their, their new drummer. drummer. The Jack dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's fucking sick. I've seen, seen his like, videos. Videos. Yeah, he's incredible. He's insane, dude. He adds I, I double pedal to everything. <laughs> I didn't even know he was the drummer of Sepultura. And like I, I was watching his videos one day, and I was like, this guy is so sick. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit, he's the drummer of Sepultura. I was like, oh, good for him. Check out Quadra. It's their new album. And I was like, I went into it skeptical. I'm like, there's no way this is going to be good. And then it just blew me away. I'm like, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> They're still uh, going. Well- one of my all-time favorite bands, Black Sabbath. Uh, I just, I've listened to a lot of the Ronnie James Dio songs all the time. That's on this list. Um, Carnivore. Do you like Carnivore? Yeah, yeah. Typo yeah. Negative. Those are like two of my favorite bands. They're on this list. Um, shit. I got even a job for a Cowboy song. I loved that one album. Uh, what the hell is that album called? Son of Nihility? Ruination. Ru- Ru- that album, Ruination, I thought was incredible. Oh, Nuclear Assault. That's one of my favorite bands there on here. Of course, I do love Biohazard. I know I, I talked about Billy before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Billy Biohazard. Oh, <laughs> ton, dude, Mr. Big, Queensryche, Loudness, all on this list. These are all my most listened to songs. So, I mean, oh, I got Toto on this list. Oh, yeah. Sym- Symphony X, Iced Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh man fuck yeah, yeah dude that's a good that's a good mix of stuff i mean i, I see i hear a lot of japanese as you know is that oh after yeah you started working with new japan did you start discovering no you know, crazy I've, artists? I've been a japanese nerd like forever like oh, all okay. my life pretty much i've been into like uh the wrestling and then the wrestling kind of for the last like 20 years and then the wrestling will kind of be like your gateway well also video games too mm-hmm. the, will be like a gateway for you to hear the this like the music that you know that they that kind of like is the soundtrack to all this stuff and a, a lot of it is like uh from back in the day more so is like shred guitar yeah. or like ripping like metal riffs and, and a lot of like shred guitar playing so uh you start and then also being into metal you find out about japanese metal bands you know everybody you have to know x japan right or yeah. a band like loudness so you know you kind of build on that that bit one of those bands seikima 2 i learned about from masato tanaka actually eat out to eat with him in japan he was like you know japanese heavy metal band and he was just <laughs> to, he started telling me about this band seikima 2 and we put it on and i was drunk in the in the, the little sushi restaurant i was like this sounds like a wrestling entrance and i got up and i was like posing it was nice, fun nice. yeah so i just like i like everything man i listen to all sorts of stuff all the time i'm always listening to music i got into really hard though the last few years this whole like retro wave genre this electronic wave synth wave it's like it sounds it's like 80s 70s 80s um themed type of electronic music and it it really puts you in like that that element and there's a lot of good artists involved in that in that genre and a lot of guys that are almost almost like I, i got into this one guitar player and his name's um, it's M Y R O N E Myrone. I call him Myrone. Okay. It's like it's like you listen to this guy and it's like going to an arcade in the eight, in the nineties and like all and you're listening to like the craziest guitar solos and synths and everything and ripping riffs all and it, it sounds so good. It's like the it's like dope shred metal. It's like Joe Satriani meets like you know uh, oh God virtual cop two or something meets, <laughs> okay like you know daytona you know arcade racing machine or something, meets like you know super monaco gp it's it's just it's fucking awesome man I, I i just like i like the way it sounds i gotta check it out i gotta check it out yeah i got into some synthwave stuff actually it started with my my wife she was into it and then i started showing it to some of the metal dudes like some of the dudes in a uh, municipal waste 
where like we were we were sitting around they were doing they were doing a you know those guys yeah those are my homies man we were, they were, were... I, I played a show with them once when that band i was in with the exumer singer nice. in, in brooklyn in a warehouse in like 2005 or six probably 2006 and it was fucking insane and it was like before they were famous or became you know what more well known you know right. and goddamn it was a fucking show. It was like in this shitty warehouse. It was not like a real venue. They were selling <laughs> gear out of garbage pails. And it nice. was it was fucking crazy. My friend jumped off of like a room that was built in the warehouse, like <laughs> off the top of it. And it was high. It was high up in the air. It was a huge stage dive into a group of people. It was fucking right. crazy. Yeah, they still go that hard, man. Like they you know, the they were one of the last shows I got to see before the pandemic and the crowd just going crazy and the, 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 it's an intense show the whole time yeah uh, but yeah we were we were we were listening to carpenter brute uh while they were doing like um autographs for their new album or something and everybody's like what the fuck is this this is awesome i'm like yep it's that um what's the other guy perturbators pretty pretty cool he's yeah. kind of a metal dude yeah i like that stuff but uh, I wanted to go. Let, let's talk a little bit about wrestling before we uh, hang up. I mean, it's been almost an hour now. I know. I'm sorry. We're not even talking. Josh is going to be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" You way to promote the sport. show, guys. Yeah, way to promote the show, guys. Sorry, <laughs> man. I don't know. He actually said we were. He was like, "Oh, you're going to talk about metal with that guy for sure." And I was like, "All right, cool." Yeah, dude. No, I I love Josh, and you know I've had him on before. I always do a special whenever he does Bloodsport. I try and talk to as many of the guys and and try to promote. You know, so yeah. uh, uh, he knows I'm going to be watching. He knows that all our anybody that's listening to this podcast is going to be watching. So, uh, but talking a little bit about it, you know, you're you're doing a lot of stuff with New Japan lately, and you know, how, how do you feel about what's going on with like AEW, where like Kenta's over there now fighting Mox, and Mox was at Bloodsport you know, the last buzz for. So like that whole, everything's starting to come together. Uh, all the companies are starting to work together. How do you feel about that? Yeah, it's interesting. I, I, that's the thing is like, you don't really know to what capacity they are going to work together. Cause it's not like, I don't know. I'm in the know of that or if there isn't in the know or how, how um, extensive it's going to be, or if it's just like Kenta working with all these companies, you know, and if so yeah. good, good for Kenta, first of all, you know, if this is if that's what Kendall wants to do, and it's just more exposure for him, because uh, he was somebody who was come, you know, whatever happened with WWE, you, I would have imagined Kenta to have been their biggest star from Japan for sure. So whatever they that, they fucking messed that up. <laughs> I mean, he is the best. Yeah. So good for him. Whatever he's doing, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool that they could there could be some cross promotional stuff because if WWE is going to con- you know continue to just exist on that their own island and that's it. You know, it why not should these other companies get together and maybe do a little cross promoting and and mixing it up. It's only going to make things more interesting, uh, yeah. you know, cuz cuz you're never going to you're probably never ever going to see that again happen in WWE. So until the old man dies, I think maybe then somebody will have a conversation. But while Vince is around, I don't think that's happening. Who knows, man? Who knows? Yeah, I think it's great. I I love seeing it. I love seeing uh, what New Japan is doing also in the U.S. with you know it's a lot of the SoCal dudes. You know, a lot of the dudes I'm used to seeing at uh, PWG or P- PCW Ultra or you know any of the local shows, bar wrestling, um, which I miss, dude. Have, did you ever make? Uh, did you, you you did a bar wrestling, didn't you? Yeah, I, I like three different shows, three yeah, or four, dude. four times. I was over That's there. one of my favorite like local things to go to because it was, it like was a, a fun show. time. It really was. I'm not gonna lie. It was a good. It was a good show. For yeah, sure. it was. It was everybody standing room. There's five dollar beers. Everybody's wasted, and yeah. <laughs> you know people are doing like Scorpio Sky is breaking fucking uh chandeliers all over the crowd i'm like we're all gonna die <laughs> yeah yeah uh, that that was the place was a good time yeah man that was fun but uh so do you plan eventually to kind of move to japan like or, or make that kind of like a full like the full-time thing over there i would love to to be honest yeah i would absolutely you know jump at the opportunity if it was to come uh depending on obviously the situation and what they want me to do but yeah if that if it, if if it came down to it i would be open to uh staying over there for a, a rather extended period of time do you talk do you speak the language no no, no. I, I could so i could get through a a, a small co- conversation but that's just because i talk to 
at least like one Japanese person every day. So, you know, and that's not counting others, but I, you know, we obviously could cheat on the phone and use translators and right, stuff. Yeah. But you try to, I try to be diligent about like, uh, knowing like basic communication and, uh, you know, you watch so much stuff, you start to hear words over and over and over again and understanding like the context in which they're being used. It makes it a little easier, but I'm sure it, it, it starts to like come like way faster if you're like living over there. Obviously. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. If you're using it every day, or like you have to use it every oh, day, yeah. it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been always intimidating. Fa- yeah, it's I've very always been, intimidating. I've always been fascinated with it. I took I took two two uh, semesters of it in school. Oh, wow. I yeah. I I you know I work at a Japanese company right now. I'm not going to say the name, but you know we we're exposed to it every day as well. And uh, I love I love the language. I love the culture. Like I would love to move over there if I could, but. I don't think that's a possibility for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like my goal, man. I just want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. have any I don't have any ties to anything. Like I'm I'm single. I don't have like a family or you know, like I have like obviously my 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 family, but not like I don't have like kids or anything like that. So surprise that no one's taking advantage of the dirty daddy. <laughs> I'm all set, man. <laughs> <Way> <laughs> I'm not going down. I'm I'm too in love with wrestling. I'm too big of a nerd. I'm too into my stuff, man. I'm too focused right now. Yeah. Focused on like training, saying my prayers, taking my vitamins, <laughs> pro wrestling, baby. I, I mean, I have too much pro wrestling to watch. I'm like, I don't know. I love training. I love just like having something to do every day. I uh, I'm just I don't have enough to, enough hours. There's not enough hours in the day to also be responsible for another person's needs as well for me right now so i have to just do my own thing right now that's it fuck yeah yeah and and you know uh this match coming up with you uh at Bloodsport, it's with jeff cobb it's a big boy oh yeah Uh, that's a big boy lays it in (laughs) he's strong he's a strong man uh how was you know how 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 is it working with him and you know just with the blood sports situation, how it is, where it's more shoot than it is, you know, work. Like, was it? Is it painful? Like, you're hurting? No, you got. I gotta think. You gotta think about. It. I, I. So I've wrestled Cobb before in the context of more of a pro wrestling match. You know, tr- idea of what a you know contemporary. Like, I don't know, a nor- pro wrestling match would be. You wrestled a long time ago, though. It must have been like five years, and. um maybe five years or so you gotta think about Cobb's background he's a seriously accomplished amateur wrestler you know I'm going up against a guy that has supreme grappling ability he's obviously super strong he's really athletic for his size um I have to really like be on my a game you know because it's it's gonna be a like I said a match at blood sport it's just going to be it's going to hit a little bit different than a match at a, a maybe somewhere else and something where you know the core root of of what we're doing is something where it is mostly all just grappling you know what i mean a lot of it a lot of it could be a lot of grappling so i'm going to be tied up with this guy that's this accomplished like olympic level wrestler at one time it's that's a that's a feat for me because i've you know i'm not an olympic i don't have an olympic credential right, right. wrestling background so i have to really uh i have to really be prepared for something like that you know yeah man and you're coming off of you know uh the last blood sport against mox who uh you know uh don't like blowing too much smoke up people's asses but you know the guy's got all eyes on him right now and that yeah. and you working with him and, and giving it to him the way you did at that match yeah that puts you on the next level man that, that's got to put a lot of eyes on you and it's got to have people reaching out. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think uh, my profile was raised tremendously from wrestling John Moxley and that match and that blood sport and all the stuff that went into that and all the press we did for it. It was incredible. And uh, I'll never forget, honestly, it was, a, it was a really, really fun time leading up to the match training uh, with Josh uh-huh. uh, around that time period and really like taking – some major steps forward in um, progressing myself as a professional wrestler yep. w- w- went into that blood sport event, went into uh, my training with Josh and 
you know, just talking about pro wrestling and discussing what pro wrestling could be, what it should be. Um, really like starting to f- really get the foundation solid of like what blood sport is and what blood sport really has the potential to be. And I think that's like what I'll remember the most about that and how important all of that was to me at that time. And, and, uh, and obviously the result was, was incredible. Obviously for me, things have been going great for me, thankfully, you know, it's such a rough, it's a rough time, but I'm very thankful for the fact that I'm, I've been able to find opportunities, you know, at a time when there, there aren't a lot of opportunities. So, yeah, you know, Josh Barnett's blood sport and that match and everything that we've done so far with blood sport has definitely for me personally, and you're seeing it in others as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's raising the profile of the athletes that are involved for sure. Even Mox, man, because, you know, people think Mox goes in there and, okay, he's an AEW champ, so he's on TV, he's at the top or whatever. But that changes the way people see Mox. The fact that he's willing to go in there and, and, and throw down with you at a blood sport, that's like, oh, well, fuck, this is more of a serious respect than just the, the wacky dude from WWE that, that's been trying to be, you know, it, it changes that whole perspective. I mean, listen, Moxley, he doesn't need my endorsement. Yeah. Um, but he's and he's a really good guy. Yeah. He and, and he and he's doing it because he wants to do it. Right. Moxley uh show came to train with me, Josh, a couple other guys, Harry Smith, Royce Isaacs, uh Alex Coughlin was training on different days, guys alternating, but Moxley was there every day with me and Harry and Josh. And uh he shows up and he wants to train. He wants to learn. He's no different than he's the biggest wrestling superstar in the world. Right. I mean, he's really, you say he's one, he's, he's one of those, he's, he's up there. He's, he's wasn't he in the magazine and the thing he's wasn't he ranked number of, one. He, he's a he's superstar. He's a yeah, mega yeah. star of wrestling. He's just a humble guy. Just shows up, wants to do work, wants to learn. He believes in what, what, what we're doing. And he's, uh, He's just being a part of it. That's I think that's that's awesome. That says so much. Yeah. It says so much with someone at that level who could pick and choose what they want to do. You know what I mean? How they want to do it, where they want to go, when they want to go. You know, he wants to come to a MMA gym in Los Angeles to train with a, a couple of guys, and he wants to be a part of Josh Burnett's blood sport and help. You know, m- m- turn this into a bigger thing, and and also I for himself he wants to test himself even at his level his experience and all the things he's accomplished at this point he's still trying to find like you know maybe something more maybe maybe something else about himself and i think that's the 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 beauty or the that's the that's the cool part about blood sport and about josh burnett's blood sport because that's the cool thing about josh is josh is that guy who is like no matter how good you are or how good you think you are or where you are. Josh is the guy who could tell you, you could probably do that a little bit better yeah. or no, try this instead. And one thing a lot of people don't realize nowadays in this world, in a lot of things, is no, nobody wants it. Everybody just wants to feel like they're what they're doing is the right thing. Right. What that what, what that they don't want anybody telling them that they're doing anything wrong. You know, everybody just is. No, no, no. I got the right idea. Look at how people argue on the internet. You know what mm-hmm. I mean. Mm-hmm. The older we get, we have mm-hmm. less people telling us like, "Hey, clean up your shit," or "Hey, this could be better," or "Hey, you could be doing, you could be, you're you're better than this." You know, I think J- Josh is like he kind of like takes on that role with a, a lot of people in a way, and 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 you know we need people like that in life. So, but like I said, blood sports raising profiles of guys. I mean, it's making people better wrestlers. You know, anybody who's kind of involved and in around blood sport, whether it's working the shows, you know, getting to know Josh, training with Josh. You know, it's it's a, a, blood sport is nothing but positive things, honestly. Yeah, man. I'm stoked to see that it's growing. It's 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 getting bigger. More shows are happening. You know, we're getting two shows back to back. Really, yeah. we're getting uh, the one coming up on the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day, and uh, then there's one the following week. And you know, I, I I know, and Josh is one of those dudes that he's got so much going on. You know, because he's acting and stuff, and he's 
doing the blood sport and he's doing the whiskey and he's you know he's over bourbon every, bourbon. <laughs> bourbon sorry sorry bourbon my bad now he's all well he, he's got bourbon and he's working on some other stuff with those Dude, distillers. I, I went to the distillery one time with him and i saw how it's done and it is no joke i had a yeah. i sat there for like hours with him and the and the, the guy who used to be in like cancer research, who was like a mad scientist and he makes the stuff. And this other girl came who just tastes it and like writes reviews about it. And they were sitting there smelling and I was tasting it. <laughs> Dude, it is insane. It's it, That's a whole other side of, of, of his thing where it's like, whoa, man, this guy's got layers. Yeah, man. <laughs> Nobody guy. fucks with Josh, dude. Everybody that I talk to where <laughs> you bring him up, everybody's like, oh shit, really? And they're like, yep. He's, he's the man, and he's I love what he's doing. I hope we get to see more blood sports stuff, and I know that you'll be a part of it because you've been in all of them, so I, I, I'm hoping that you know it keeps going for you. Uh, I'm excited to see your career with New Japan blossoming and, and getting bigger and bigger. Um, and, uh, dude, yeah, I wish you nothing but the best. You're uh, 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 one of the top stars right now in pro Thank wrestling, you. I would say. And uh, It's wild to hear it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I appreciate you taking some time to chat, man. Uh, you know, I, I knew that we would have a good time talking shit about metal, and uh, hopefully, this is uh, Josh doesn't get too mad about how much metal we talked about. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure he'll be fine with it. He loves metal. He yeah, does. Man. He genuinely does love metal. He oh, gets for sure. Into it. When well, that's talks, how I met him. He, when he talks about music. He, he becomes like a little kid sometimes. Hell yeah, that's how I met him. I met him at a fucking Kill Switch show. That's how yeah. I ran into him back backstage. I'm like, holy shit, the babyface assassin. He's like, oh yeah. Like, fuck yeah i'm like all right cool and we just we kept running into each other at shows because you know that i'm always back there and 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 dude and now we're friends it, it, that was how we uh first hit it off we like worked together on the first blood sports show i did but we didn't really talk maybe a little bit but then I, he came to a show a gcw show we did in la and we started talking in the back and the next thing i was like i think like two hours went by and we were just talking about merciful fate and like stuff like that and i was like yeah. oh, wow he's a really cool guy hell yeah man well yeah. Brother, thanks again. Have a good night, and uh, I'm looking forward to the match on the 13th. Everybody watching and listening, please, bloodsport.watch. That's the website to order the pay-per-view. Uh, where do people find you on the internet? Uh, at Born Dirty Die Dirty on Instagram and at Dirty Dickinson on Twitter. <laughs> Dirty yeah. Dickinson. Uh, where did that come from, real quick? What? Dirty, 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 Daddy? Dirty. Dirty. <laughs> This guy I used to work out with, man. His name is Jesse. He used to go to my gym. He's actually like banned from my gym now. But <laughs> <laughs> he's Jack, this kid. Back in the day, he was really strong, just naturally a freaky dude. He could just like outlift you and, and out rep you and with perfect form. Just a jacked, solid Viking kid. And uh, anytime he'd do a set, he'd always, you know, you'd, you'd, I couldn't do as much, whatever. He'd always pat you on the back and be like, don't worry, daddy's here for you. And, I, <laughs> and I'd say to myself, damn, that's such a good line. I was like, I got to work that into a promo somehow or something. And uh, I kind of just put it together, dirty daddy. I, I made a t-shirt and a lot of people bought it. And I was right. like, oh, I guess this is it. And people started chanting it, dirty daddy. And I was like, all right, this is it. It's a name. Right. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah, brother. Well, dirty daddy, thanks again. Uh, everybody follow him online. Make sure to order the pay-per-view, Josh Barnett's Bloodsport, February 13th. Cheers, brother. Have a good night. Take it easy, bro. Later, man.